Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and get started. Some people might join us midstream, but that's okay. Um, thanks everyone for joining our workshop on Pressbooks today. I'm Tim Ballmer from the library. Uh, also joining me to help facilitate the session are Stacy Reardon um, and also Kyoko Shiyosaki. And we have... Yes. I have to get out of <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so we're going to be running the workshop together today. I'm going to be the primary presenter, um, and Stacy and Kyoko are going to be available to help monitor the chat if you have questions. So if you have questions as we go along, as I'm demoing some of the features of Pressbooks, feel free to add them to the chat or raise your hand um, and we can take the questions live as well. Since we don't have that many people here today, you know, I think we can be pretty informal with, with taking questions you know, as, we, as we go through. Um, so to give you a little bit of background about what Pressbooks is, um, Pressbooks is basically a web-based platform that allows anyone to create and publish digital books, digital content, open educational resources. Um, and Berkeley launched a sort of custom press books portal for anyone on campus. So anyone who's a part of the campus community can sign up for an account and create and publish a book um, on press books. So we wanted to talk a little bit about today about how you could use press books um, for creating digital content. So, you know, we wanted to have this workshop in person, but here we are all online. Um, and we're gonna try to make the workshop as hands-on as we can. Um, so what I'm gonna do is start with an overview of what Pressbooks is and show you some examples of how it's been used by, by people. Um, then we'll go through some of the key features that will help you understand how Pressbooks works and really how to navigate around the platform. Then we're gonna go through sort of the process of creating a book from start to finish and we'll focus on seven sort of basic things that everyone needs to know. Um, and our goal today is to make you feel comfortable and confident with the basics so you can transition to working on a more in-depth project on your own you know, later on. So like I said, I'm gonna use a few slides um, and I'm also gonna do some live demos so you can see how to do a particular task within the Pressbooks interface. Um, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat or raise your hand. Um, and if you, if you run into something that's real tricky or you can't get something to work, um, we also have the option of, of having you break out into a breakout room um, with Stacy. So she can give you a little bit more kind of one-on-one -on -one and help you troubleshoot if there's something that you really can't figure out as we, as we go along. So a little bit about what Pressbooks is sort of from a high level. Um, first of all, it's a pretty fast sort of publishing platform. So you can easily publish things. You can easily edit and update a published work that you have. Um, it's pretty flexible. So it's easy to customize what your book would look like. Um, you can also export it in multiple formats depending on what you're creating the book for. So you can create a web book. You can also export it in um, EPUB or as a PDF. So it's really flexible in that aspect. Um, it also has other features built in like um, open licensing. So if you want to, you can share your book say under a Creative Commons license um, which allows you to keep the copyright, but allows others to use your works in particular ways. Um, it, it provides a pretty uh, easy and professional layout. So you don't need to know anything about coding or designing. Um, it's pretty much plug and play. Um, it's also fairly accessible. Um, it offers a lot of different reading and downloading options. And it also plays well with other systems. So it's, it's portable. So if you create a book and you wanna export it and upload it to another platform, 
Pressbooks allows you to do that. Um, and then for, like I said, everyone at UC Berkeley can have a Pressbooks account. It's free for you to publish. It's free for you to host books on the platform that we have. So here, I just wanted to provide a few examples of um, what other people have been using Pressbooks for. Um, we do know that this tool is probably best suited for text-based works. Um, so if you're interested in making a, you know, a multimedia work or something that's extremely sort of graphics heavy, you might want to consider a different platform, but Pressbooks is really good for sort of text focused uh, materials like digital books. Um, and we've seen it being used for a lot of different things, digital textbooks, course modules, toolkits, a lot of different things. So here's just a few examples. Um, so here's a microbiology textbook. Um, this was created by faculty at Oregon State University. Um, I can just show you a little bit about what it sort of looks like. Here's a sample chapter. Um, so you can see, obviously, like I said, text heavy, but it allows you to include images, of course, uh, formulae. Um, also includes other things like you can include sort of breakout text boxes. You can include sort of quiz questions at the end, so. Uh, another one is for interactive language learning resources. So this is a Portuguese language learning book that was created by the University of Wisconsin. Um, and here's an example of what it looks like. You can also include audio. So um, embedded right within the web book itself. Uh, you can include sort of interactive quiz questions. Um, so it's pretty powerful in terms of what you can do from, from this sort of perspective. Uh, here's a collaborative anthology of Hispanic literature, and this was put together by the Rebus community and includes contributions from over 20 different student authors. So here's, you can get a sense of what this looks like. Um, authors who have highlighted various um, uh, writers from Hispanic literature um, and includes all these different student authors. So the, the point of showing this is that, you know, your book can include many different authors. It just doesn't have to be you. Um, you can work collabor collaboratively on a, on a writing project with others. So here's a course module. Um, this was actually created by a Berkeley professor and it's a short visual guidebook for a walking tour of the Hayward Fault um, as the fault sort of transverses through the Berkeley campus. And here's what this looks like here. And you can see there's different um, pieces as you walk through the campus along the fault line. And then just one final one that we've actually created, you know, you can use Pressbooks to create documentation or educational guides. This is actually a Pressbooks guide, so it's sort of a meta guide to teaching people about how to use and publish on the UC Berkeley Pressbooks. Um, and we'll provide this link and you can look at it later. It's got sort of everything we're going to cover, you know, today. So this is just a sort of sampling of some of the things that people have used Pressbooks for. Um, there's also a really good resource called the Open Textbook Library. And this is basically a directory of over 800 openly licensed digital textbooks. Um, I recommend if you're looking for ideas about how other people have structured their books on Pressbooks, you can go there and everything is openly available. So you can take a look at the, all the other 800 books there. So 
as we kind of go along, we wanted to make sure everyone is set up with a Pressbooks account. Um, I emailed yesterday the link to sign up for an account. Um, but if you haven't done it, that's fine. You can do it right now. It, it, it's, it's pretty easy to do. If you go to openbooks.berkeley.edu and click on sign up um, in the upper right hand corner, you can do that right now. Um, you just have to choose a username. Um, and just a note that this username is not the name of your book, but it's just the name of your Pressbooks account. You can create multiple books on Pressbooks. So um, the username is just, you know, I, I just use my own name, uh, like Tim Ballmer as the username. Um, you have to use your Berkeley email address because um, our specific instance of Pressbooks is only available for, for the UC Berkeley community. Um, and then if you haven't done it, you can choose a password. Um, also at the bottom, choose to register my book later. Um, it's just the easiest way to go about it right now. Um, once you've submitted this page, you should go to your email because the confirmation will be there. So if you haven't already done it, please go ahead and do that right now. Um, and we can just wait a minute if there's anyone who needs time to do that. Maybe when you're finished setting up your account, if you can just give us a thumbs up um, or in the participants list, if you can um, click the little green check mark, yes. So that way we can know everyone's up to speed. There are a few green check marks also in the participants list. So we can move to the next step. And if folks um, have questions, then please feel free to ask them in the chat. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I'm happy to move into a breakout room if you need some individual assistance. Awesome. Thanks, Stacy. So let's jump right into creating a new book. Um, so once you've signed in, you'll be taken to what we call the dashboard um, of your account. Um, and if you come up to the top of the uh, navigation, you'll see, if you hover over my books, you'll see you can see a variety of different options. One, my catalog, so that's all the books you've created. You can create a new book or you can clone a book, um, but we're interested in creating a new book, so you can click on that. And you'll be taken to a page that looks something like this. Now, basically, this is where you're going to create a name for your book um, and also a URL for your book. So one thing to note is that the URL for your book can't be changed, but the name of your book can be changed later on. So when I was preparing for the workshop, I created a new book called The Glory of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, so you can see that's what I put into the book title there, and that's changeable. And then I created um, the URL, which you can't change, like I mentioned. So I just chose Glory of Golden Gate. And if you look in the instructions here, um, you're only able to use uh, characters, which are letters or numbers. So I believe you can't use any punctuation in your URL title. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then finally, at the very bottom, in terms of privacy, I chose to create, keep the book private for now. Um, and I suggest that you do that as well. Um, <clears throat> I also just wanted to jump in to note that, the, that we do want you to create a book today as part of the instruction session but that you can create more than one books um, in your account. So this book that you create today, it could be the book that you keep working on and eventually publish, but it could also be just a test book um, for you to tinker around with, and then you can create um, a new book later. So totally up to you what you want to do. That sounds great. So why doesn't everyone just take a minute and create your own book? Um, this will allow you to, you know, test things out as we go through the workshop today. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, hopefully you've been able to create your book now and you're taken. To the dashboard. That looks something like this. So at the dashboard. I want to take you on a quick tour of some of the main screens that we'll be working with in Pressbooks. So the first, like I already mentioned, is this top navigation bar. Um, so if you hover over the name of your book, you can see that you're also able to do several different things here. One is visit the book. Um, that's basically previewing what the book was going to look like online. Um, you can edit the book and you can also delete the book. Uh, you can also see that there is some navigation here on the left hand side of the page. We're going to be focusing um, on the top, basically the, the top four of these. So organize, book info, appearance and export today. Um, and these are going to be the main things for adding content, for organizing your chapters, um, for entering metadata about your book, and for customizing how the book looks, and then also at the end for exporting the book to these other formats that I mentioned earlier. And today we're going to explore each of these um, in a little bit more detail. Uh, one thing to note, if you ever get lost or you don't know where you are, you can always click on dashboard and you'll come back to um, to this sort of a home page for your book. So first off, let's take a look at the organize in the dashboard menu here. So if you click on organize, this is essentially in kind of top level view of what's in your book. And you can see that your brand new book already comes pre populated with a few different sections. So every book is going to be organized into front matter, uh, main body and back matter. And there's going to be individual sections or chapters within these primary parts. So within press books, there's a lot of room for customization in terms of how many chapters you have or how you'd like to organize them. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, one thing to note is that every book has to have a front matter and a back matter section. Um, they can't technically be deleted, but you can choose what to put in those sections and maybe you don't want anything in those sections. Uh, and that's fine. <laughs> and we'll talk about that a little bit more later in terms of how your book looks. So if you click on one of the sections in this organize window, um, you can go into the edit mode for that section. So together, let's click on introduction. And we're going to talk in a moment about sort of adding and editing text. So you can hold off on doing any of that right now. I just want to make sure that you can find your way around these different sections. So um, we clicked on organize and then I clicked on the introduction link and here we are in the edit mode. So you can see here is a text box where you'll be able to add text and media later on. Um, once we start adding things, you're also going to want to be able to preview your book as you're working on it. So there are a couple different ways that you can get into this preview mode. Um, and this is a pattern with press books. There's a lot of ways to do the same sort of thing. So one way to get into preview mode, preview mode is to visit the book. That's the link that I showed you earlier. So if I click on visit book and open it up into a new tab, I mean, there's nothing in here right now, but you can, this is what my book looks like at this point in time. Um, it has a title here at least and my name. <laughs> Uh, another way to preview um, a particular section that you're working on is to go up here in the upper right and click preview. So this is a preview of that 
the introduction section. And like I said, there's no content there yet, but we'll put some there in just a minute. So the title of the chapter is introduction and we're gonna add some text in a little bit. So that's another way to, to preview. Uh, another important thing, of course, is the save. Um, Pressbooks has a feature where it tries to auto save every few seconds, which is great, but you know, you probably really shouldn't rely on that. If you, once you've added text, we recommend that you hit the save uh, button right then, and then uh, there'll be a copy of it. And you can actually see down here, there are revisions. So if you add something that you didn't want, you can always roll it back. So that's just a little bit of the lay of the land with regard to navigation. Um, let's pause if there's any questions that have come in from the chat um, before we actually jump into creating some of the book content. See, maybe there's none specifically in the chat box. Uh, thanks, Stacy, for posting that link. Um, if people need content as we go along and add text and images, um, we've created some sample materials and Stacy linked the folder right there in the chat. Um, this is the same thing that I emailed out yesterday. It's just a Google folder with some dummy text and some images that you can use to sort of uh, test out as we go along. So feel free to use that or you can use whatever content you'd like. Thanks for adding the link. Um, and Tim, I see a question. Um, how long can books stay on the library server? They can stay there indefinitely, um, as long as the library licenses press books. Um, you know, we have a decent amount of storage with them. Also, you know, if the library would, would decide to discontinue that, um, that's where a lot of these export features come in handy because you can essentially take your book uh, export it and upload it wherever else you want on another platform. So, um, but for right now, you know, as long as the library licenses press books, um, the stuff will stay up there indefinitely. Great. And as a follow-up question, um, they asked, can e-scholarship host the press books? Yes, of course. In fact, we just had this happen last week. Um, a classics department professor just published something like 1200 pages of uh, Scolia on a Euripides play, exported it as a PDF in Pressbooks, and then uploaded that PDF for long-term preservation in e-scholarship. So that's a useful feature of Pressbooks is you can just get an easy, easily downloadable PDF and then upload that to, to e-scholarship as well. So let's jump into some of the basic things that you'll need to create your book. So the first one is adding some text to your book. So I'm still opened in the introduction section here and I think that's a decent place to start. Um, there's a few different ways to get text into your book. Um, in general, we recommend that you type your content in a different tool like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, and then paste that into uh, Pressbooks. Now, there are other ways to import, say, an entire existing work into Pressbooks. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, and if you're interested in that, we can go into that later or offline at, a, at another time. But for today, we're going to focus on um, sort of copy-pasting text from another document 
into Pressbooks and then see what we can work on it uh, there. So here's an example that I can show you. Uh, I'm gonna go to my desktop where I've already created a folder of content. Let me just move this around here. So I've already pulled some text that I want to add here to the introduction. And since my book is called The Glory of the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, I've written some text for my introduction to The Glory of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, just kidding, I pulled this text from Wikipedia, um, but I'm just using it right now as an example to show you um, how to, how to put text into the Pressbooks uh, box. So I've copy and pasted it from my Word document into here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save that just so I know that it's in there. It looks like it imported, you know, fine from the copy and paste. Um, like I said, we can do a preview now to see what this would actually look like on the Pressbooks. You can see, you know, it sort of looks fine. Um, the text right there. Um, now, of course, you might want to have more interactivity within your text. And, you know, one obvious thing that people have, especially in digital textbooks and textbooks that are meant to be viewed online is links. So uh, I'm going to take a link right here, Wikipedia page from about San Francisco, and I'm going to link it right here. Now, the, the, the box, the text box on Pressbooks works like any WYSIWYG editor. And by WYSIWYG, that sort of means what you see is what you get. So it's easy to add links um, uh, and then view what the content uh, looks like to, to, to us. So I'm gonna highlight San Francisco. I'm going to go to the link box and add the link from Wikipedia. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to take a look at the preview again. And now you can see San Francisco is linked in the introduction. Uh, another thing you might want to do is add different headings to sections in your text. So let's maybe add something called overview. And I want it set off from the rest of the text. So I'm going to go up here and instead of it being a paragraph, maybe I want to say I want it as a heading too. So I just highlighted it right there and I'm gonna save it again. And then we can take a look at what this is going to look like. So now we have overview as a heading to in my book content and then the rest of the text is normal paragraph text. So I mentioned that we're in the WYSIWYG editor, so the visual editor. Um, this is primarily what we recommend people using just because it's the most user friendly. Um, this is nice because you don't need to know any HTML code in order to input and format your content. Um, you know, you can just copy paste it in here. And if you want to make something bold, you can just do that from right there, you don't need to add the HTML code. Um, if you're interested in the HTML code, you click on the text tab and then you go to basically the raw HTML code. So you can see the overview that we inserted has an H2 tag. Um, you can see that here's the href link for San Francisco and whatnot. But for most people, you know, the visual tab is gonna be, is gonna be what we're looking for. So if you want to, let's pause a minute. If you want to add some text to the, your introduction, maybe try to add a link or two. Um, maybe try to add, you know, try the different header styles. Um, see if you have any questions in adding text to, to your press book. And like I mentioned, you can pull, you know, text and from that uh, folder that we link to, um, or just add whatever text you have.
And again, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat. Um, and when you're ready to move on in the participants list, you can click that little green yes check mark and we'll know you're ready to go. I see a question that asks, can you share access with an RA or co-author? Yes, you can. Um, the easiest way to do that would be for that person to create their own Pressbooks account, and then you can add them as a co-author or an editor. There are a variety of different roles that you can add others uh, to your Pressbooks. Um, but yeah, that, there's definitely ways to do that. There's also a question about chapter metadata. Uh, there's some fields at the bottom. Are those necessary to, to use? Uh, not right now, um, but you can if you're getting into more involved content creation. Uh, so for example, um, different chapters can be available under a different license, like open license, or you can add that if different chapters are authored by a different person if you're creating a, a, a collaborative work. Um, but for right now, you don't need to worry about those. Thank you. And um, a follow-up question about collaborating with folks. Can they be outside of Berkeley, like another university, or would the university need to also have an account? Well, primarily, um, the accounts that we have are for UC Berkeley community authors. So anyone with an at berkeley.edu email address. Now that being said, we are able to make exceptions for people outside the university to get accounts on our system if you're creating a book together. So if you're interested in that, you should just contact us and we can help you set that up. Great, right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any other questions about just adding text uh, as a test run, or we can maybe move on to the next task. Looks like most folks have clicked the green checkbox, so I think we can move on. Okay, great. Uh, well, let's move on to number two. This is uploading media. Um, you know, the best way to upload an image file or really any other media file is by clicking add media. You can see it right below the title of the chapter. Um, so this is a upload box here and you can upload any file that you want. Um, 
by clicking on select files and that'll take you to your folder that you've already had your images in. So this is my uh, folder. And I'm just gonna upload it. You can see I've already uploaded some photos of the Golden Gate Bridge. And I would like to use this one to insert into my introduction. Um, so once you've uploaded, say, a JPEG that you want to insert, um, you'll come to this screen that prompts you to add other metadata information about the image or other file that you've uploaded. Um, and it's important to fill out as much of this as you can. Um, I filled out the alt text right here. This is really for accessibility. Basically, it's a description of what the image is that would be read out loud by a screen reader for visually impaired users. So I've created something, the text is photographs of the Golden Gate Bridge, looking up at the bridge. Um, I've added a title to the, to the image. Sometimes these already come auto-populated based on what metadata is already embedded in the photo. Um, I've created a caption for my image. Um, I've created, a, I've actually pulled this image from Wikipedia. So I have a source URL that I can include right here. Um, so you might have that for some of the images that you're going to be, they're going to be using. Um, I've added other in, uh, metadata such as, uh, this is the username of the person that uploaded the photo to Wikipedia, um, other sorts of things. It also allows you to include uh, licenses, reuse licenses, such as Creative Commons licenses about what license that particular image is available under. Um, and that's probably actually a good time to kind of talk about, you know, you should only be uploading or using content in your book that either you own or that you have permission to reuse. Um, and, you know, the Office of Scholarly Communication Services can help you work through this. Um, in, in this test book, I've been, I've been using images that are either from Wikipedia, which means they're under a Creative Commons license that I know I can reuse these photos, or they're images that are in the public domain, which means that there are no copyrights left in it and I can use it for whatever purpose that I want. But that's an important thing to consider as you're creating your book. You have to have the rights to be able to upload photos to use in your book. So we're down at the bottom of the add media page. I'm gonna choose a large size to add into my book and we'll see sort of what it looks like now. So you can see it just embedded the photo right there. And here's the actual caption that I created, which populates right below the photo. I'm gonna save this like we do. And then we can do a preview of what this is going to look like. So you can see it embeds the large photo that I created um, and here's the caption, like I mentioned. So like I said, you can also add other types of media. Um, for things like videos, you know, it's recommended that you add an embed link uh, instead of uploading a video file because sometimes those can be Pretty large files. Also another thing that you should know with regard to like video is that you know, at the end of this process, once you export your work, you know, you can export it to say a PDF. And obviously the video is not going to play inside the PDF then. So you just keep that in mind in terms of what types of media you're uploading to your book because you know, it's going to change how it appears sort of visually. So if you export a PDF of your book, you know, you're not gonna be able to view that video. So why don't we take another minute um, for you to practice uploading an image so you can either pull an image you have or use the one from the folder that we provided um, and give that a go. You can also do other things like uh, resize the image. Um, you can adjust the wrap of the image so that it sits within the text versus above or below text. Um, there's a lot of customizability that you can use with regard to displaying images in Pressbooks.
So Claude says, I've tried to export PDF and it looks like there's a lot of work to be done. Images and boxes are split between pages. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, Claude. Um, Claude, um, do you know how did you export the PDF? So what was the mechanism that you used? Was it in Pressbooks or was it in your browser? Sorry, um, so I used the export feature within the browser within, within um, Pressbooks. Hmm. This is something I can follow up with you later, but I just, I just noticed um, it wouldn't be presentable uh, in that format right now, but maybe I can tweak it. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it depends on what the sizing of, if, you, if you're also using images, what the sizing is with your relative to the text. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can follow up later and maybe troubleshoot that. Thanks. So Joe asks, I did a left justify my image, but can't figure out how to add space between the image and the text. There's no gap. Uh, I believe that's a way to add a buffer around it. Um, I think if you click on the image within the edit window, um, so if you X out of that view and then just click on the image right now, does that give you? Well, it allows me to do like the justify. And then what happens when you put the pencil? It just pulls into here. Um, so if, if there's not an automated way, you can go into the HTML um, and you can add padding that way within the um, within the, the image tag. Um, and I can, I can paste what that would look like into the chat in a minute. Right, the padding code around the image. Thanks, Stacy. Okay, does anyone else have any questions about photo editing? Adding photos, I mean. Let's move on to the next section then around adding more chapters and also organizing chapters. So if we click back on the organize tab, oops, I need to save. We're co we come back to our sort of homepage dashboard here and you can see um, our front matter, main body, and back matter. Um, so let's go ahead and add another chapter. And I'm gonna do that by going here on the left-hand navigation and just click on add chapter. Um, I'm, gonna add, I'm gonna add a chapter on design of the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm also gonna grab a, some text that I Hold earlier. So I'm going to create a new chapter. 
So the thing I can do now is preview what this chapter is going to look like by clicking on our preview tab. So here's the new chapter, chapter two, design of the Golden Gate Bridge. And I, like I said, I dumped some text in there already. Um, but when we go back to the organize tab, let's see where it actually put it. So it put it within the main body. So here is the chapter that I just created, design of the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and it puts it in the main body of our book. Um, another thing you can do that's pretty easy is drag and drop chapters to move them around. So say I want design of the Golden Gate Bridge to go first, you can just click and hold and drag it. And now it's going to appear before this, this other one called chapter one here. Um, so that's pretty easy. And you can actually drag and drop them between um, parts as well. So if I want design of the Golden Gate Bridge to go, okay, maybe I can't do that. <laughs> I thought I could drag it into the front matter as well. Um, but you can drag and drop within a particular section um, and I'm guessing if I, when we create a new part, I'll be able to drag it and drop it into there as well. Um, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to create another part. So let's say I want to call this part student essays. I'm going to save it. And now when I come back out, you'll see that I have an entirely new part right here. So main body and also then student essays, a separate part. And yeah, it works now. I can drag say a chapter from main body into student essays if I'd wanted to. And if folks are interested in creating textbooks, some people use this like um, instead of main body, they can rename that to part one and then have chapters below that and then have another section that's part two and then additional chapters. So it's just to give you more facilitation in how you organize, but you also can just have the main body and then put all of your chapters in the main body if you want. Right. Another thing we can do is delete chapters. So say I don't want this one called chapter one with nothing in it. Um, I can just remove it by hovering over it and clicking on trash and, and it's gone. One other thing I wanted to show you is um, how things are viewed um, in different formats. So um, I'm in the organize tab. Um, and if we take a look at here, show in web versus show in exports, um, you can customize this based on how you want people to be viewing the content. So, so for example, maybe um, I don't want the design of the Golden Gate Bridge to show up um, in the web version of the book. Um, I can remove it uh, by clicking on this tick box here and unticking it. Um, so now if I go to a preview of the book itself, you can see that the main body in that chapter is not visible at all. All I have is an introduction and appendix. And that's because of this tick box right here. So I've unticked it so it doesn't show up uh, on the web. Now when I export it, it'll still show up. But for right now, you know, it's, it's not showing up on the web. But if I tick that box again, and do another preview and read the book, you can see that the main body and that chapter now shows up again because I have that box ticked. So uh, this is just to say that it's really customizable. You know, if you're creating a book for a class and you want to show this chapter one, three, and five, you can simply untick two and four and those won't show up.
So why don't we take a few minutes now, if you wanna practice working with chapters, you can add a new one, you can delete one, you can add a whole new part, um, you can move chapters around between different parts. Um, let's give it a few minutes if you wanted to test that out and see if anyone has any questions or snags. Okay, so now that we've run through a few of the basics of how to get content into your book, let's move a little bit on to some of the more infrastructural aspects of setting up your book. Um, and one of those things is about adding metadata uh, about your book. So if we go, uh, we have been in the organize tab on the left hand side of the navigation. We're going to move down into the book info tab. So this is a section where you can add more metadata about your book. Um, this page is pretty long, so you'll need to scroll down a lot to get through everything. Um, so some things you'll want to enter or update here might be the book title. So as we mentioned at the beginning, you can change the name of your book right here. Um, so if, if you want to do that, um, you can also create a short title, a subtitle. Um, this is another area where you can add other authors um, to your book. Um, you can add where the book is being published in terms of city. You can add a publication date. There's a lot of different things you can do here, but the most important thing is make sure you have a title, author information, um, and also copyright information. So if we go down here, um, you can add information about who is the copyright holder in the book. So basically who created the book. So I'm gonna add my name here. Um, you can also create a um, choose a copyright license to, to license your book under, um, or you can leave it as under all rights reserved. Um, I want to release my book under a Creative Commons attribution license, so you can just choose one in the drop down if you wish to do that. Um, and the point of doing this is, you know, if you want your book to be open to license, if you want others to be able to uh, reuse content, adapt content, then that's something you can do right here by choosing a CC license. Um, if you want more information about the CC licensing and open licensing in general, you can drop us a line and, you know, the Office of Scholarly Communication Services is happy to talk you through with this. Um, and by choosing one of these drop down, you know, Pressbooks will automatically add that metadata to your book. Um, an important part, uh, important thing that you should realize about this book info section is that this doesn't save automatically. So you need to go up here in the upper right hand side and click on save um, and then uh, it'll be it'll be saved uh, but there's no auto save so now if we go and sort of preview my book again i think we should see something a bit different so now beforehand this said all rights reserved but since i've chosen a creative commons attribution license that shows up right here with the cc icons and the name creative commons attribution So why don't we take just a few minutes, if you want to play around with adding more information in this uh, book info section or about metadata with your book, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna cover the, uh, the cover image in just a minute. So if you could hold off on that, but if you want to say add a copyright license or um, add other information like a subtitle for your book, you can do it right here in this book info page. Ah, oh, thanks, Kyoko, for adding that link. There's 
So a question about if a faculty member wants to keep this book behind CalNet authentication, would they keep the book as private? Uh, if you keep the book as private, I believe that only you will be able to view the view the book. Um, so there's no CalNet authorization, um, but you can add um, a password to a book and then give that password to someone so they could then view it. Um, uh, so if you have it as private, you would just need to go down that route, um, but it wouldn't be viewable to anyone with a CalNet authorization. So now we're ready to move on and add a book cover. So if you look on the same dashboard page for book info, uh, you want to scroll down to the cover image section right here. So there's a few things that you want to be aware of when you're coming up with a cover image. Um, First, there are recommended dimensions for the cover um, so that we're sure that it can display correctly and you'll see it um, in the text around this page here. Uh, there's also a maximum size of two megabytes. Um, another thing is that our version of Pressbooks has a cover generator tool and you can use this if you want to. Um, it's a little bit hidden in a different part of the dashboard under the export uh, link, um, but you can play around with that if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna upload a static uh, cover image from the folder on my desktop that I've um, included some JPEGs in. So let's save it now. So let's see what it looks like when I visit the book again and see if the cover image shows up. Uh, and yeah, you can see it here now. So I have my cover image of the Golden Gate Bridge um, right there. So why don't you go ahead now, take a few minutes um, and upload a cover image uh, for your book. Uh, once again, if you need an image, you can grab one from the Google Drive folder that we shared earlier. So now that you've chosen a cover image, uh, let's talk a bit about the look and feel for the inside of the book. Um, so Pressbooks offers different themes that you can choose to customize your book's design. So for this um, edit, we're gonna go to the appearance tab. Again, this is on the left side of the navigation. Um, and once you click on that, you can see that Pressbooks offers all of these different themes, um, basically different layouts, different types of fonts um, that they've put together. Uh, it's defaulted at the one in the upper left here, this Andreessen theme. Um, but if you find another one that you sort of like the look and feel to, um, in order to activate, all you need to do is click on the activate button. And it takes just a minute for that to load. But now it'll see that now the active theme is Baker instead of Andreessen. So, so we can take a few minutes. You can play around, maybe change a theme to see what another theme looks like that you know you prefer. Um, and why don't we go ahead and do that right now? So I know we're almost coming up on time. Um, I think in the interest of time, we'll jump ahead to the export and publish uh, overview. 
I think that's probably one of the most important pieces. Um, but you can play around with adding a cover image or choosing a theme later. Um, and we're happy to answer questions for that as well um, after the workshop is complete. So whenever you make a, a book with Pressbooks, um, you always have the option to make a book, avail book available online and not anywhere else. Um, so you might not ever want to export the files in any formats and you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But, you know, we think that the exports are useful if you want to make your book available as a PDF or as a, a EPUB file. Um, and of course, like we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, if you want to take your files and use them somewhere else, Ian, the export features are always important to be able to do that. So let's take a little look at what this is. So again, we're looking at the left hand side of the page around uh, export. Um, so you have some different options for how your book is going to be exported. Um, you can export as a PDF, um, you can export as an EPUB, that's I mentioned a, a, a for say like Nooks and other e-readers. Uh, you can export as a Mobi for Kindle readers. Um, there are other formats here you can export in that are a little bit more advanced, but these are useful if you want to say um, import your content somewhere else. So let's say I want to export in all these formats. Um, I click the boxes here and I'm going to go ahead and click this export your book. And you can see Pressbooks is working in the background to export whatever my book looks like at this point in time as these files. So as a PDF for print, for digital, as an EPUB and as a Mobi file. So you can see the files have been created down here. Um, and Pressbooks will retain the last three batches of your export of files. Um, but the th important thing to keep in mind is if you make changes to your book, so if you add another chapter, um, you would need to then come back to this screen and export your book again um, for that chapter to be included say in a PDF download. Um, it doesn't do that automatically. You need to come to the export uh, page and then do that. So you, there is some customizability in what you want to appear in your export. So if we go back to the organize tab, remember how before I said, well, maybe I don't want to show design of the Golden Gate Bridge in the web. You can also do that for exports. So say I don't want this to appear in a PDF download, I can untick that box and then come back to my export, re-export all the files. And then whenever someone comes to my press book and they want to download a PDF, that chapter will not appear in the download. So it's really customizable. You can choose which chapters you want available for viewing on the web. You can choose which chapters or sections you want available for, for downloading. Um, it's pretty customizable. Um, someone's having a hard time adding a part back to the to the back matter. Is that not allowed? Um, they're able to add to the main body, I guess, just not the back matter. Yeah, I believe with the back matter, um, you can't, a part is sort of like a separate section um, that you can then add chapters to, um, but you can't add a part within the back matter, if that makes sense. It's because back matter is essentially its own part. So you can't add more parts, but you can add more sections to it by clicking on the right side of that page, clicking the add back matter button. So it would be sort of like you were adding more chapters um, or sections to the back matter. Thank you. Yeah. 
So one other thing with the export feature is that um, whether you want to have the export files available online um, and you can customize this in the settings tab. So if we go down to settings on our page and choose sharing and privacy. In this section right here, it asks whether you want to share the latest export files. So I think it's defaulted to no, but as I was creating this book, I changed it to yes. I would like the latest export files to be available on the homepage for free to everyone. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. So I've saved that, I said yes. Now, if I go back to my press books, if you go below the little image here, I can download this book. So now I can download all of those versions that I exported. I can download a digital PDF, print PDF, a Mobi version and EPUB version. So this is easy when people come to your press books, they can either read the book online or if you've enabled this feature, then they can download the book in these various formats that you've exported to. So I know we just have a few minutes left, but if people wanna test out the export feature um, and let us know if you have any questions or problems with exporting uh, your, your test book. I also see a question about um, someone who used their email address as their username. And I see that as the author. Is there any way to edit the name of an author? Hmm. I am not sure offhand if you can change your username. Uh, I wonder if you can edit how the author is viewed in the when the book is saved? Stacy, yeah. do you know offhand? Um, so if you go to the right, the top right side, you should see, hello, your username. Um, if you click on that, you'll get into your user um, edit view. And there, there's an option to add a nickname. You could change that nickname. Um, and then there's a drop down menu underneath that says how to display your name. So that might be. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So if I add Timothy Vollmer there, and then I can choose how it's displayed, Timothy Vollmer, and then save. Thank you, that's helpful. So we really just scratched the surface today. Um, there's a lot more to explore in press books than what we've covered. Um, there are things like interactive elements that you could add to your book. Um, you can include things like latex or you can create your book using markdown, uh, mark, markdown language. Um, there's lots of other features such as 
collaborative annotation through the use of plugins like Hypothesis. Um, like we mentioned earlier, you can collaborate with other authors by adding them as co-authors or co-editors to books. So there's lots of other things that you can explore on your own and feel free to shoot us questions if you, if you have them. Um, we really only did, you know, sort of pretty high level overview today. Um, there's a few other things that we wanted to mention that the library can help you with as well. Um, so if you're interested in creating a book for a course at UC Berkeley, um, we can help you get it um, published. Um, and by doing certain things like adding it to the catalog of books at Pressbooks, um, we can help by adding it to the UC Berkeley library catalog. We can help get it listed in other places, like I mentioned, the Open Textbook Library, um, or even like adding it to eScholarship. Um, so if you're interested in those things, we're happy to talk with you, you know, later on about that. Um, there's, there's so many things to explore. We know we didn't cover most of it today, um, but, you know, feel free to test things out. Um, don't worry, you can't break anything. Everything here is reversible. Um, you can also check out the UC Berkeley Pressbooks publishing guide that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's also a ton of great resources online with regard to Pressbooks. So Pressbooks has an entire publishing community um, where you can ask questions about how you particularly included a piece of content or published a book. Um, there's a lot of great resources and people that are really willing to help. So um, that's out there as well. So I know we're coming up on the, the end of the workshop here. Does anyone else have any other questions or things they wanna share with us before we wrap up for today? Ever, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. Yes, I was just wondering, you mentioned it earlier, but if you can just um, speak again to if you wanted to add a, collabor a collaborator outside of UC Berkeley, um, how you could do that. I think the easiest way would be to send us an email right now um, and we can add it on the back end. Um, so use the email address that Kyoko um, put in the chat, uh, skullcom at berkeley.edu and we can help you do that. Thank you. No problem. Well, thank you everyone so much for attending. Um, and thanks to Stacy and Kyoko for helping facilitate. Um, like I said, we can make these, uh, well, we already shared the slides with you. Um, we'll, we'll also share uh, the UC Berkeley Press Books Guide again. Um, and also the video once we process it. So um, I hope this is like a useful introduction. I know, like I said, there's a lot more that you could explore. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone so much for coming to the workshop.